Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Rodna and on this channel we talk about all things faith, purpose and lifestyle. I'm excited for this video because the question is, what do you want? What do you want from life? What do you want out of your relationship? What do you want from your business, your career? So many people don't know what they want. And I'm a coach, so I work a lot with people and work with their mindsets and addressing limiting beliefs. I work um, on performance coaching and helping people develop as leaders. So that's my job. And a lot of the times I ask people, OK, so what does success look like for you? Or what do you want to achieve out of this? And probably 80 percent of the time people say, I don't know. So people are walking around without a clue on what they actually want in their life. And what they do tell me is what they don't want. I don't want to be unhealthy. I don't want to be a failure. I don't want to have a terrible relationship. And, and I know it's easier to address what you don't want, but the real power and success comes from being able to figure out what you do want. What do you want your life to look like? What do you want your marriage to look like, your relationship to look like? And being really intentional, because it does take intentionality. You need to be able to sit down, plan process and figure out what is it that I want? We're moving all the time. We're moving towards a direction. And if you're not intentional about focusing on what you do want, and, and that's why I'm really big on goal setting and visions and, and having a vision for your life, because when you set a vision for your life, the direction that you're heading in, you see the goal and you're working towards that goal. Whereas if you don't have a goal, you're moving in a direction because we're, we're all moving anyway. So you're moving into a direction that you may not necessarily like and you get to a destination and you think, this is not what I want. This is not what I asked for. Well, that's because you didn't ask. That's because you didn't state what you wanted. So life happened and you ended up in a terrible place. You ended up in a terrible situation because you couldn't identify what exactly it is that you wanted. And on the purpose of this video, I'm going to share three questions that you need to ask yourself in order to be really intentional about what you want. The truth is you can never have what you can't see. You can never have in the physical what you haven't first seen in here. So when I ask people, what do you want? This is me trying to pull something out of them, trying to pull an image, an idea, a picture, a vision of what it is that they want. So when there's nothing there, you can never achieve that physically because you're not working towards it. You can't see the goal. You can't see the picture. You can't see that. And I really understand the importance of being able to see it. On my phone right now, I don't know if you can see it, on my phone right now, I've got my vision board as my screensaver. It's here because I need to see it every day. And I've also got the same vision board on my watch. So when I look at the, someone, when someone calls me, oh, look, who's calling me? Ah, my vision's calling me. When I check my watch, what time is it? It's time to work on my vision. I need to be able to see what I'm working towards. I need to be able to see what it is that I want. So when something comes along, I can benchmark that. Is this part of what I want? No, it's not. Not every good thing is a God thing. Just because it's good doesn't mean it's yours. Some things may come your way, but if it's not according to what you want or what God has for your life, as nice as it is, let's park that. So when I ask you, what do you want? What can you see when you picture your life? What can you see? I can see everything that I'm working towards on my vision board. And I see it on a day-to-day -day basis. I see it's on my tablet. It's on my phone. It's on my watch because it's a reminder to me, this is what I want. And every day I make small steps to get to where I want to go. And have that sight in mind. Whereas if you don't know what you want, you don't know what you're working towards, you're not going anywhere. So that's the first question. What do you want? What do you want? And you can fill the blank. What do you want in your finances? What do you want in your health? What do you want in your relationships? What do you want in your house? What just what do you want in general? Everyone's at different parts of their life. Everyone has different needs. Everyone has different wants and uh, everyone's on different journeys. What do you want in your relationship with God? Whatever it is that you want, think about it. Just take a moment. What do you actually want? Can you confidently say you are able to write down in a sentence or two, I want blah, 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 blah. And I encourage you to write it down. There's so much power in writing things down. The moment you have something on paper, ooh, I don't know, something happens. I tell you that now, something happens. So ask yourself, what do you want? It can, you, can, you can think about it as a general in life. You can think about it as a specific topic. So what do, I, what do you want from your health? What do you want from your career? What do you want from your business? But essentially just sitting down, getting a pen, getting a notebook or getting something and just writing down, having time to reflect. What is it that you do want? What do you want? And I'll share this example. You want to get married. 
what do you want in that husband and i have this <laughs> every time i see this book i, I smile and I'm going to give an example about being intentional and about being specific about what you want. Before I met my husband, we went to the same church, but we were in two different locations. So I always knew him, but I didn't know him as my husband. I just thought, hey, this is a guy that we, I go to church with. All right, whatever. I, I was thinking, I want to get married one day. And I began to think, oh, what kind of a husband do I want? So I went to Wilkinson's at the time and I went and got this notebook. And I began to write what I wanted to see in my husband. So when I thought about my husband, his character, his personality, his looks, like what kind of a husband did I want? And I began to write prayers to my husband in this book. And I was like, whoever he is, oh, I'm excited for him because I just began to pray for him. And I began to say what I wanted to see in, in, in our marriage, to see in our families and some of the things that I would pray about. And the first day that I wrote in it is the 17th of September. 2014 we didn't get married until 2017 i didn't even know he was my husband until yeah anyway the first entry i wrote was i said i don't know who you are and i don't know where you are or what you're doing but just know that i'm praying for you whoever you are so i decided to keep a journal of my prayers to you and god willing one day i'll give this to you and then i actually gave this to my husband on our wedding day which is pretty cool but in here i literally wrote down the characteristics that I wanted to see from my husband and some of the things I'd pray about I'd say God may you create a clean heart in him may he have a pure heart I want him to love you and have a deep relationship with you I want him to seek you for understanding there is so much I want my husband to be selfless to love other people and have genuine concern for other people I want him to be pure-hearted not angry bitter I want him to be able to lead my family and to lead me in prayer and Bible study. I want him to be hands-on in the house with the cooking, cleaning. I want him to have a vision for himself and our family and always seeking you first. Let him be a man of your word, not just to act nice or act humble. There is so much that I started to write down in here and I used it as a benchmark. This is what I wanted to see in my husband. So when someone came to me and they were pursuing me, <laughs> I would look at their fruit and I'd go back and I'd look at this. Okay, do they have a vision for their life? No. Are they able to lead me in prayer and Bible study? They couldn't. If they couldn't, bye. And I, I and and I'm so glad I was able to do this. And I thank God for the opportunity to do it. But I was intentional and I set my mind. I actively sought out what it is that I wanted. And and I prayed for this man of God so much so that when he came, and if anyone knows my husband in real life, he's a man of God. He is he is a man of God. Anyway, that's a story for another day back to being intentional <laughs> what do you want not what you don't want that's the easy stuff the hard work is trying to figure out what do you want so get a pen get a paper pause this if you need to and ask yourself that question what do you want and once you've established what you want the second question is this in the will of god for you because it could be in the will of god for someone else but is this in the will of god for yourself if you tell me that you want to get married to a non-believer is that in the will of god for you what does the bible say and how do you figure out what that will is i've got a video here watch it when you're trying to decipher what does god want me to do watch that video but is it in the will of god for you and how do you determine what the will of god is for your life you need to get in your bible the word of god instructs us and tells us how we must live our life for example poverty is it the will of god for you to be poor no it's not the bible has many verses about you being wealthy you being rich living a life of abundance so when you're talking about wanting a business or wanting wealth is this in the will of god for your life what does the bible say about it and sometimes we get frustrated because we pray for something but it's not in the will of god and the bible says in james 3 verse 4 and even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. So if your motives are wrong, if you're doing something for the wrong intentions, and if it's not in the will of God, I'm sorry to tell you, you're not going to get it. So what do you want? Is it in the will of God for you? And many of us are settling for second best because we don't know what we want. God is calling us higher. We're his children. And he wants the best for us. He doesn't want us to be poor, broke, beat down feeling stuck, empty, lonely, and all of these things. He wants more for us. And in this year, we can get more. We're not victims. We're victors. We are not borrowers. We are lenders. We are not the tail. We are the head. And that's why you need to get in your Bible and start seeing what God says about you. You need to start seeing what is the will of God for your life.
And it's not the will of God for you to be a victim. We are victorious. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. So get in your Bible, read the word of God, pray, meditate on the word of God and understand what is the will of God for your life. Should I pursue or should I not? And if that's a yes, then great. If it's not in the will of God for your life, go back to step number one, revisit what do you want again? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? And if you're feeling a bit stuck, if you've got pastors, if you've got leaders, or if you've got people that you trust, speaking to them and asking, I'm thinking about doing this, is, is this in the will of God for my life? And if the answer is yes, the third question you need to ask yourself is what are you going to do about it? It's all well and good knowing what you want. It's all well and good knowing that this is the plan of God for your life. But actually, if you had just stopped there, you would be in the same position as if you didn't know. Maybe even worse, because now you do know, but you're actively sitting and not doing anything about it. What are you going to do about it? The world belongs to doers. The Bible says faith without works is dead. So what are you going to do about what it is that you want? That I've got the, I've got the green light. I've got heaven's backing on this. I'm good to go. If you close your notebook, put it on the side and don't do anything about it, that's not going to come to life. And God gives us many ideas. He gives us many things that he wants to birth through us. There are so many things that are yours that belong to you, but actually you have to put in the work for it to manifest on earth. So many promises in the Bible that God has for us. But again, we need to be able to manifest that in the world. Many people get prophecies or get told that you're going to be this and you're going to do this and you're going to do this and just sit on it and just to wait for it to appear like manna from heaven. But there is a part that we have to play. There is a part that you have to play in bringing that into fruition. So what are you going to do about it? This is the practical element. What do you need to do? Who do you need to speak to? What do you need to research? You want to start a business? Okay, you don't know anyone who's started a business before? Get on YouTube, get on Google. Google how to start a business. There is so much information in this world that is at our fingertips, quite literally at our fingertips. Start researching, speaking to people, networking people. How can I get my foot in, in real estate? How can I get my foot in the property? I want to buy a house and speaking and finding out from your community what you can do. I 100% believe that we're sitting on multi-million dollar ideas. I find it really cool but strange. Have you ever had an idea and you thought, oh, this is a really cool idea and then you did nothing about it? And then time passed, that same idea that came to you, you saw someone else doing that very same thing. It could be a business idea. It could just be a thought. It could be anything. That same thing that you had an idea and sat on it, you then see manifested on earth and you see someone else doing it. The world belongs to those who do. So as great as your multi-million dollar idea is, it's not used to anybody else. It's no use to you if you're just sitting on it. So what will you do? What are you going to do about it? What's the first step you're going to take? Once you've done that, what's the next step you're going to take? Once you've done that, what's the next step you're going to take? One of my favourite sayings is, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. One step at a time, but so often we want to get there now. We want it to happen now. But you're going to have to put in some work. If you look at agriculture, you sow the seed, you water the seed, and you wait and you water the seed, and you wait until your harvest is ready. And it's the same way. We want things to happen overnight. We want to go viral. That's not always how things work. There is a process to it, and you have to actively start. So what do you want? What do you want from your life? Is it in the will of God for your life? And what are you going to do about it? Success leaves clues. And the people that have been successful that you see around you have asked themselves these three questions and have gone out and done it. In this year, we're all about doing. It's no use thinking and planning and processing and thinking and planning and processing, but actually never doing. So we're getting outside of our comfort zone this year. We're learning, we're growing, we're being stretched to capacity. We're getting stretched outside of our comfort zone. We're tired of being safe. I don't know about you, I'm tired of playing it safe. We're taking risks this year. We're taking a leap into faith and trusting what God has for us. Because the, the Bible tells us that no eye has seen, nor ear heard, and neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has planned for those who love him. I love him. And if you love him, you know that God's got great plans for you in this year. So let's partner with him. 
and do great. If you've liked this video, be sure to share it with your friend. Share it with a bestie. Don't gatekeep. Don't hide these things. Share it with your friend and subscribe if you haven't already. See you in the next video.